starts off with three niggas eating Chinese food and drinking champagne for some reason. They all drug dealers and they all rich and ballin'. I guess that's why they got the champagne or whatever, cause they rich. They paid in full of Chinese food. <laughs> The movie takes place in Harlem. They New York niggas. They call each other B all the time and they wearing Tim's and shit all the time. It's pretty annoying. Ain't got no soy sauce up there, B? Nah, I ain't put no fucking soy sauce in the back, man. Yeah, yo, niggas over Mitch. Yeah, man, listen, oh, man, this is lucky your ass. Hey, make that shot again. Five thousand, you can't make it again. You fucking with the wrong nigga right now. You need to be right. fucking with me, man. You off right here, man. Your man drug, that's off right there. <laughs> Wood Harris is the main character. Y'all know Wood Harris. He got that fucking weird face. He look like Tyler the Creator. He got that type of face, African face. His girlfriend is having a baby. He's making a lot of money selling drugs. Everything's going pretty good for him. He friends with Cameron from Dipset. This nigga's in the movie. He plays the crazy nigga or whatever. He pretty crazy. It's pretty fun to watch actually. I like this performance a lot. You good? Wood Harris leaves the hospital and he going back home now. Some niggas ambush him in his apartment and they beat all the dog shit out of him and rob him or whatever. Nigga, why did you leave the hospital in the first place? You fucking just had a baby, bro. You should definitely be at the hospital. <laughs> anyway, he's at the hospital now because he got beat up. It might be the same hospital too. That's kind of deep a little bit. Then it flashes back to one year ago. It's the 80s, by the way. This all takes place in the 80s. That's important. Wood Harris not selling drugs yet. He actually a broke nigga working at a laundromat or some shit with the dad from Row Bounce and shit. That's whack. How many times I gotta tell you about this boobity boob shit playing in the store? It's my rules, my radio, my store. Wood Harris' sister is dating this nigga named Calvin. He sells drugs. He like a big baller and shit. He kind of obnoxious and shit. He comes in to flex on all the laundromat niggas for some reason. It's pretty cool. You, know, you worry about the cleaning and shit. You know what I mean? Because I know you're making money up in this bitch. <laughs> Can I help you? I hate to see Cake's big brother working in a sweat box. Why don't you keep working hard because it's going to pay off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Makai Pfeiffer is here now, of course. Of course he is. They filmed this in 2002 and they needed a dark skinned nigga. Omar Epps is probably busy, I guess. Either way, they got Makai Pfeiffer. Him and Wood Harris are best friends. Makai Pfeiffer sells drugs also and is a big baller as well, just like Calvin. He's like hood famous and shit. He a pretty nice guy. Everybody love him. He a uh, friendly drug dealer. They get you a toothbrush. You're gonna be able to keep the white bottom clean without it. You're gonna get the shoelaces all wet and dirty, man. Can't start calling you a poop putt. <laughs> What's up, homeboy? Keisha! This nigga A here. Hey, hey. Hey, Mitch, can we shoot some hoops? I can, though, man. I'm busy, B. I yeah. gotta go to work. I got you, man. He don't know nothing about no hoops. You need to be coming to me for that. You just came for the clothes? Nah. Wood Harris is going about his life, laundry, he loved laundry, he loved delivering laundry, he's delivering some laundry one day when he meets this Spanish type nigga, his name is Lulu, he's being really weird and foreign and shit, this nigga be smiling way too much and shit, I don't like it. You work for the cleaners, right? Will you take some gloves for me, please? Just a few things. You want something to drink, a soda? Nah. But I take that laundry though. I'm Lulu. Okay, what kind of name is that? I don't know, it's my name. <laughs> 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 Wood Harris and Makai Pfeiffer are hanging out and they just the coolest niggas in the hood. Actually, Makai Pfeiffer is the cool one. Wood Harris be getting roasted about the laundry shit all the time. You need to put your man on, he look bad. Tell that nigga to hit you with an ounce or something or something. Wood Harris finds some coke in Lulu's pocket when he's doing the laundry. It turns out Lulu is a drug dealer also and he wants Wood Harris to team up with him. Seriously, everybody in the world wants this nigga to sell drugs. Leave this nigga alone, bro. He's fine. Laundry. Sweating in that laundry for nickels and dimes is not going get you that ass. 10 years, me and you gonna have matching vengeance. 10 years? Think of more like 10 days, man. You like money, right? Wood Harris agrees to sell coke with Lulu. He tells Makai Pfeiffer and he's really excited about it. That doesn't stop the laundromat roast though. I'm just trying to picture Mr. Jefferson hustling on these streets. <laughs> it ain't just about the money. It's not. Definitely about never dressing like a nigga like that. <laughs> Makai Pfeiffer has this junkie uncle and shit, and not like a happy, lovable junkie either, like all the other hood movies. He's a big ass asshole, and he a hater and shit. Fuck this nigga, bro. Money making Mitch. I know you're gonna look after family. 
on, I'm broke, baby. <laughs> Meanwhile, Roll Bounce Dad comes in and tells what Harris that Calvin got arrested. Remember Calvin? He got arrested. Guess your sister gotta get a better man now. Boy just got busted by the cops. <laughs> Yo, Chief, you seen Calvin? Nah, he got locked up. I'm taking his place. What you looking for? Just one. One. <laughs> you ain't got no bottle? What? Y'all could hook up with you later, right? Nah, man, I'm across the street. Building across the street. All right, Chief. Peace out. Wood Harris ends up taking over all Calvin's old clients and now he's officially in the drug game. His strategy is to sell bigger amounts for super cheap and undersell everybody else without getting murdered by all the other drug dealers for doing that. I sold it cheaper so I was selling it faster. I sold it so cheap I started taking their customers away. Now I didn't want people hating. I put people on, understand? The streets was happy. Show me the money, what would? <laughs> Meanwhile, when Kai Pfeiffer ends up going to jail, one of his corner boys got robbed or whatever, and they all went to kill the guy that robbed him. Fuck you mean you got robbed, man? Who robbed Come on, man. That nigga dumb. That nigga stand out here like these dudes is a Harlem or something, B? You done lost your privilege of getting any money, man, until you show me where that man is at. Go ahead, man. Go find that man, B. Go this way, man. Hey, my man, go this way, man. Go that way, man. Mitch backed up his words and ended up doing some time. Now I'm all by myself in the game, just like Scarface. Wood Harris all by himself, and he lonely now. He go to the movies by himself like a weirdo. He ain't got no friends. It's pretty sad. Come on. What's going on over here, man? Man, boss, you ain't taking my messages or something? Keisha ain't call. Oh, fuck, fucked up. <laughs> Wood Harris quits his job and now he a full time drug dealer. He gets dumbass rich super fast. He's using his neighbor's apartment for a trap apartment. They bottle everything there and count the money there. He got random goons now and shit. He's getting pretty hook famous. He don't like it though cause he's shy and he miss all his laundry or some shit. Meanwhile Makai Pfeiffer is fucking doing jail stuff. He gets into this very extremely random fight. This shit happens out of nowhere bro what the fuck. And lock up. Brothers always heard what was going on on the outside, especially when it involved money. Yo, hurry up off the phone, nigga. I'm talking to you, nigga. Oh my God. Oh. Yo, Rico, man, how you doing, dude? Anything you need, let me know. That's why I'm here, B. Hey, yo, let me get an extra water, B. So yeah, it seems like Cameron set this whole thing up just so he can get Makai Pfeiffer to fuck with him and be his friend or whatever. I don't know. I could be wrong. It seems like they're kind of hinting at that though. Then again, what exactly is in it for this nigga? Why the fuck would he agree to this? Ten niggas jumped the nigga fam. Ten niggas pounded him out, stomped the shit out of this nigga, man. And, and, and he had like ten razors in his ass, man. He can take it out of his ass. He can give a nigga a buck fifty across his face, man. Blood everywhere. You stay cool like how you be cool, all right? No doubt, man. Water. Aye. There's these two poindexters that keep randomly popping up and trying to buy from Wood Harris. They're so obviously cops that it's not even funny. Seriously, this nigga's wearing a tucked in yellow turtleneck. Oh That's fucking bad police work, sir. What's going on, baby? Yo, how you got that butter? Yo, you holding? I think somebody been misleading you, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, come on, man. Look at you. Got this European joint all done up. I don't know nothing about what you talking about, understand? Yo, we'll meet up again, right? Different time, different circumstances. Something was up with those cats. They was either stick-up kids or the feds. Either way, I wasn't fucking with them. Yo, Lou. Money bags. I really miss my nigga. I really miss my nigga. Lulu gets killed and it's pretty sad. Wood Harris takes all Lulu's coke to the big boss guy or whatever. They at some restaurant. This shit look like the Better Call Saul restaurant a little bit. That's a good show. Also, who killed this nigga and why did they not steal all his drugs? You just gonna give me all this stuff. Why? I mean, it's not my birthday. You know what I'm saying? I sold a lot for him. Maybe we go on. 
Can you handle ten keys all by yourself? Yeah. Good. Mackay Pfeiffer and Cameron get out of jail. Wood Harris is basically a kingpin at this point, and they all team up and become a drug dealing team. Also, I haven't mentioned it yet, but there's some random invisible DJ that chimes in and be narrating everybody's life and shit. He'd be like, oh yeah, y'all. Wood Harris' friend Lulu just died, y'all. Found him in an apartment bleeding, y'all. It's not like that. It's not that detail. I just think it's funny, though, that he says what they're doing. He's like watching them all the time or some shit. It's pretty scary. On the Oddly enough, this DJ nigga never explains how Makai Pfeiffer got the fuck out of jail in less than a year for a fucking murder. That's insane, bro. This nigga snitching or something. They never explain that shit. This nigga Cameron is basically the shooter of the group or like the muscle or whatever you want to call him. And he's just the most loyal nigga in the entire world too. Right out the gate. Like, bro, calm down. You just met these niggas. I love you. Be anything. Be this nigga Cameron starts getting super out of control now. He be flashing his guns and making pornos and being super obvious. Are these niggas like the first drug dealers of all time? You think they would all know better? Why are they allowing this shit? Even for a New York nigga, this is very extra. This nigga Wood Harris is legit a kingpin. Is he too polite to check this nigga for real? I guess that's kind of the point of the story though. I guess back before the drug game got so heartless and diluted, the friendly drug dealers were in charge. This is how it was, I guess. They looking out for everybody, everybody having fun. How long could that really last though? Come on, bro. What's going on? good, dick. Chilling, man. You love my peoples, man. Y'all met over Y'all, sorry about all that. You know, I wasn't trying to get up on you or nothing like that. No, what is no hard feelings or anything like that? Bitch, stop following me around this motherfucker. Calvin gets out of jail and Wood Harris puts him on. He tells him to keep a low profile and to stop being a hot boy and harassing laundromat workers. Yeah, nigga, you hot. You just got out the joint. You understand what I'm saying? And your man Mitch just got out of jail. You schooling him like this too? I don't have to do that with him, man. You you just need to just lay low, man. That's all you gotta do. I'm hooking you up. No, what the fuck is this current front cold, face cold, ass cold, nigga right here? What the fuck is cold, this? Hold on. I'm gonna step. Alright. But I'll see you later. Fuck out. Makai Pfeiffer goes home and beats up his uncle or something. Money making match. Hi, Roller. Come to visit. What the fuck you doing here, Ice? You in here living off my mom's? You getting high in front of Sonny, man? Don't fucking come back no more. You the one who sold me the drugs I'm getting high on? Come on. You got a pocket full of money. You won't even give your mama no real money. We back at the beginning now, at the Chinese food scene. This nigga Wood Harris has the baby and eats all the Chinese food or whatever. Come on, man, open this fucking safe. Yo, Calvin, man, why you doing this, man? I can tell that's you. What? Fuck all that. Shut up! Pick up some Kermit motherfucker now. Huh? I can't see fucking blood in my eyes. Well, get his ass up out of here. Fuck. Shut up with that crying shit. I'm not trying to hear that. Some fucking combination. You know what? Fuck it. Ah! Bro, I'm not gonna lie, this scene fucked me up the first time I saw it. This is a good ass movie. Was at the hospital bed. Said nigga, are you dead? My nigga said yeah. Anyway, Wood Hair survives and he's feeling real bad now. Makai Pfeiffer and Cameron want him to sell drugs again. He don't wanna do that shit, of course. Of course he don't wanna fucking do that shit. What is wrong with these niggas? I'm broke, baby. Hey yo, hey, niggas get shot every day, B. You be a'ight, nigga. You tough, right? I know what floats A's boat. Remember this nigga? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's poppin', Kermit? Oh, Cover up. Get you some soup, some tea. Come on, man. 
things get even worse when it turns out Makai Pfeiffer's little brother got kidnapped. What the fuck, bro? This is the saddest hood movie I've ever seen. The kidnappers are asking for some ransom money. They want 500,000 or they gonna kill him or something. They want 500,000 or they gonna kill him or something. I know it's probably not the right time, but fucking, you should have got your family out the hood, bro. You think of buying Rolexes and motorcycles and shit? It seems like he really cares about his brother's safety. You would figure he would try to do that. But he a young nigga, his priorities probably all fucked up. I understand, kinda, whatever, it's not my business. But I'm not finna fake for these peck of wood. Get out my business. I don't know what to do, hey. I don't, man. I feel naked out here, B. Any nigga that ever looked at me wrong owes me money is fucking dead. But I need my little man back, B. I need him back, man. It's 22 keys, 14 of them for Sonny. It's in the bag, you know what I mean? Wood Harris reads up one last time and gives all the drugs to Makai Pfeiffer. Now everything should be okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. Everything is fine. It's fine. What's wrong? They found Sonny. We found Mitch. And he's dead. What? Ah! Really miss my nigga, cause I'm responsible for your well being. Ah! Really miss my nigga. All I had left to Mitch was his voice in my head, saying that he was gonna meet up with Rico that night. You know I got all my niggas looking for the little nigga now, B. I need you to help me sell these 14 keys so I can get this ransom money for Sonny, man. You got 14 bricks right there? Yeah. Show me the money, what was? Yeah. It's gonna be business. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron ends up robbing Makai Pfeiffer and killing him. Go fucking figure. This unstable ass nigga turned on you. Who would've knew? I never knew. Wood Harris has a hunch about Cameron killing his friend. He ends up snitching on this nigga. He sets him up with that weird turtleneck cop nigga. I mean, he killed your friend, bro. Sure, you can snitch on him, I think. That's fine, right? Yeah, I called him. And I gave him the number of those fake ass dealers who turned out to be the feds. I ain't snitching on nobody from Harlem, man. I give you a couple cats down in D.C. doing their thing, out of town doing their thing, but um, when I come home, I'm still gonna be the king. Everybody happy now. Wood Harris is still rich somehow because he found a bunch of diamonds in Lulu's closet or some shit. It happened way earlier. I forgot to bring that shit up. Also, Makai Pfeiffer comes back to life somehow and they have another drug dealing party. Everybody's selling drugs. They all, everybody love drugs. <laughs> they find out who kidnapped the little brother also. It was the uncle. That's extra fucked up. This nigga a piece of shit. This is all a true story, by the way. I mean, they made some shit up, but that part is real. What the fuck, right? Fuck this nigga. Then the movie ends with this angry, kind of out of place, old head rant about how people not gangsters no more. Us old players are gone. But you can see our story on music videos with prop guns and fake champagne. I guess you don't have to be somebody no more. I guess you can just front like you're somebody you ain't. You would think the moral of the story would be don't sell drugs, right? Uh, whatever. It's a good movie. I'ma come clean. I never actually saw this movie before this video. I think I had the DVD. I think all black people were required by law to have the DVD. It never looked appealing to me though. I think maybe because the box art looked kind of phony. I wasn't fucking with it. But I should have watched this shit, bro. This shit is a fantastic movie. I got about halfway through watching it and I knew it had to be based on a true story. It feels so real. These actors did a crazy good job. Cameron especially. Sleep. This nigga was arguably the best part of the movie. Makai Pfeiffer and Wood Harris had great chemistry too. They really sold me on their friendship. They felt like real friends. It definitely made all the sad parts way sadder and shit. Again, this is based on a true story, but a lot of the shit they did make up. Like, this shit did not take place over no fucking one year. It was like seven years or so. Also, Wood Harris didn't really snitch in real life. They completely made that part up, apparently. That's not fucking cool. I looked up the whole Rich and Outpost story that's based off of. 
I went down that whole rabbit hole and shit. The whole thing is super interesting. I would say watch Vlad TV's interview with AZ Faison. That's the Wood Harris guy. Look him up. He a nice guy. Everybody love him. He sold drugs. He a drug dealer. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon guys. I see y'all niggas, man. New music video thing on the way. All kinds of stuff on the way. My podcast is out now. It's on everything. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, all that shit. It's called Prem's Hood Stories. We tell sad hood stories and I be roasting the guests a little bit about their stories. It's pretty fucked up. Big thanks to my sponsor, The Ridge. Go grab a wallet. Use promo code PRIM to get that discount. These shits are sweet, bro. Seriously, I like this shit a lot. I'm glad they sponsored me. Tune in next time, B, for more depressing sad hood movies. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. This shit over now. Okay. It's over. Bye. Water.